beautiful. Oh, breathe in and breathe out. And again, breathe in and breathe out. Okay, now that we've gotten past that part, Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Cartwheels around the patio. We have had some cabin fever. <laughs> We've survived some cabin fever. We have a day of beautiful, beautiful temperatures. And look who's outside. Well, look at who all is outside. And I thought I would just celebrate this day of <gasps> breathe in, enjoy the sun and breathe out. Relax, kind of chill vibe. We're going to check out some spikes, the developments of my Phalaenopsis. But the rest of the orchids, for the majority, are outside. <laughs> oh, it is wonderful. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am. Long-winded intro, but it's so worth it. I'm standing in sunshine. The orchids are getting some light. The orchids are in sunshine as well. It is just... <laughs> what a relief. Anyway... It has been diabolical the past week. They have had perpetual darkness for at least four days straight. Now we're going to blast them with some light and hope that they get a little bit more of their energy going and I can recover for the lost days. However, part of this video is also to preempt the subject of risk and reward. The risk of temperatures, airflow, and rain. Because as you can see, all my phalaenopsis are out of their masks. We are mid-December and they're gonna get rained on heavily. Hopefully, if the forecast is to be believed, it is a risk, yes, but it is a calculated risk because I have certain temperatures that are so unusual for this time of year, and I'm not talking day temperatures where I can get away with 17 degrees, the orchids can be outside, I have to bring them back in, but I've got temperatures at night that are going to hopefully allow me to leave my orchids outside the fowls specifically to get a decent flush because now that we have a day of reprieve I could get them all outside come 3 a.m. we're gonna have another deluge which will last through Monday Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday now what is the risk here so far, the night temperatures throughout these days are balmy and quite acceptable for established phalaenopsis, not for something that you're acclimating. Don't do this with your phalaenopsis if you're in the same situation as mine with regards to no controlled grow space and you're dependent on whatever the environment throws at you. Established phalaenopsis can go below their preferred temperatures of 20 degrees Celsius. And my temperatures will be lower than that, including pouring rain hopefully but there's also going to be a lot of airflow so the temperatures and the airflow will balance out because the pouring rain will come in stages and then abate lots of wind and then we have more rain the idea being that all of that is going to work in their favor that their pots not only get nicely flushed through but I do not stop the momentum of the root growth I've been having because the lack of light also slows them down now, my problem, and this is the risk, will be possibly Thursday and Friday, the night, they're dropping down to 12 degrees Celsius. They will still be outside if on Wednesday I still have the guts to leave them outside. Now, the calculated risk on Wednesday will be, supposedly, it's going to rain all day. Meaning, I'm going to get soaking wet to bring my phalaenopsis inside. Meaning, my phalaenopsis will be wet inside with cold temperatures. So you see, there's a big risk here for two nights because the Saturday will be nice again and by that time they can dry out and come back in. This is where I am sort of going to weigh the odds. What am I going to do on Wednesday based on how the weather forecast changes, progresses? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I will then leave a community post as to what I'm going to be doing on Wednesday based on Thursday, Friday temperatures. So I will complete this video, but let's have a look at some spikes. Oh my goodness. I'll keep the camera on the tripod and hope not to make you seasick. So here we have Sweetheart, has her beautiful spike extending. The roots are still looking good. They're still looking like they're progressing. I've got one root going into the pot, but the leaf obviously hasn't really progressed much. That is the characteristic of this orchid. The minute that she starts to grow a spike and roots, 
Something stops growing and usually that would be the leaf. That's why they are stunted as opposed to how they can grow to their maximum size. I'm okay with that because space is very limited indoors and if she stays a little bit stunted in her growth but she still blooms, I have absolutely no issues with that. She is still in her mass because the pot has a stake in it and if I put her down, the stake is gonna make the pot wobble as opposed to all the others with stakes in them, they are on the shelf. As you can see, the stake can poke through. So I'm going to have to find a place for her where she can stay solid without being blown over. That's why she's still in her mask. Here are the majority of my little ones. This is Walter Jr., great spike. <laughs> and of course, needs to be growing some aerial roots, but that's okay. Walter Jr. has plenty of roots in the pot. I'm not gonna mess around with him. This is Maximilian Jr. right here. All the aerial roots that we potted up, they are still viable. They're doing great. I'm not feeling anything squishy in there at all. Look at him. A little spike coming. Awesome. Here I've got Mini Aurora. She was my 2.0. And this is also a time to check for scale. I've got some glistening stuff right here, but that is all happy sap which makes me also very happy because <laughs> roots in the pot finally. And after two years and I thought I had lost her, she has a tiny little spike coming. And because of the happy sap, I'm going to let her spike. That is the plan up until now. Then I've got Phalaenopsis Maxi right here, finally also growing some fabulous roots. I hope that some of them go into the pot. This is awesome. It'll be the first time in two years that he blooms as well. She's a smaller white Phalaenopsis, that's why she's called Maxi. Very happy to see this spike. You can see I've positioned all my orchids to face their main source of light, which is the facade behind me. So moving them from inside to outside, I'm not gonna disrupt the growth of the spikes. And the reason I can do this right now with the majority of them without risking bud blast is because no buds have formed with the exception of one, but I would rather her get a great flush and if I'm going to risk some buds, so be it. This is so much more important because moving forward, who knows how long it's going to take until I can be this radical with them again. And back here is Mini Vega Cecilia. This is fantastic to see a tiny root coming out at the base there. Super important for this orchid to get a little bit more roots growing. No spikes, but even if she were growing a spike, I would not let her bloom. Gorgeous little bloom. I would love to see them again, but not at the expense of the health of the orchid. Then we can move down the row because there's some goodies happening here as well. We recently saw my Sopressa there. She is just rocking her little pot casbah there. It's fantastic. It's so good to see. Yes, she is going to get inundated, hopefully with rain as well still in her mask again because i don't want anything to blow over and then here's one of my most important phalaenopsis this is maximilian haven't seen his blooms either for one season that was in 2020 when i last saw the blooms didn't push a spike in 2021 but here we have a beautiful spike and the old spike here is branching and i'm going to just keep monitoring maximilian because as far as his root growth goes, they're still okay. But I can see that there's a root tip down here slowing down. That's why the rain, I hope, will reactivate it, as well as the next boost of light they're getting right now. And then this is where I'm going to risk some bud blast, but it's more important for me to be able to get this orchid also nicely flushed through. This is Aurora 3.0 doing fabulously one of the most beautiful fragrances in my collection, including all the cattleyas, and she's already starting on buds. If I lose them, not a problem. She's got this spike, she's got this spike, and she wants to branch. So at some given point in time, we will get Aurora blooms, but you know what? Maybe not 100% count. It doesn't matter. Important is the health of the orchid. I am just so pleased that this one never skipped to be putting her into semi-hydro, rocking her little pot kasbah as well. We can have a little bit of a <clears throat> intermission. Gorgeous, gorgeous Victoria Regina, just breaking up the foul monotony, if you so wish. <laughs> Not monotonous to me. And here is Stan the man doing excellent. 
has been living his vida in the basket as well. Rain upon rain upon rain upon rain. And you know what? Even the growths may not be getting so big, but the ones that have been progressing throughout the rain, they are not getting any kind of weird wrinkles on their leaves like the other ones do. If I can show you an example down here, if water wasn't abundant enough, and this happens to most of my growths, but yeah, he's just been happy, so happy. So have I, because apart from the fact I do get a little bit anxious when it's dark upon dark upon dark. <laughs> um, I wonder who doesn't. <laughs> but having said that, then I had to look outside and see the orchids that are living outside, just drinking it up and doing spectacularly because they are in their happy place right now. So I focused more in that direction. The fowl table, we can move along here a little bit further and then put the lens down so you can see what I'm going to be talking about. <laughs> spikes upon spikes, gorgeousness. This is Bubblicious back here. My first ever proper successful transition from bark into lecker and self-watering. And she didn't die. She was the one that taught me the one element that I had done differently and why she turned out to be a success. And that was consistent temperature when repotting. I will always look at her and go, thank you for the lesson. And finally, I learned it. So gorgeous spike coming. I bought her back in the day with two spikes. She has a much bigger potential of what she could do performance wise. But <laughs> I'm not greedy. I'm going to be letting this one bloom for sure. But that'll be another video because when it comes time to cut the spikes off my fowls, not allowing them to bloom, we'll go through them one more time and I will explain my reasoning behind it. But another orchid that we're gonna let bloom is my gorgeous, super duper performing Phalaenopsis Schilleriana. Look at this, beautiful. And look at this. If you know my intentions of making sure that my Schilleriana would hold on to more leaves, la, we still have four and we still have more roots. Look at that, cartwheels around the patio. Yes, granted, they're a little bit slower in their progress and their growth, but my goodness, this is exciting. This is her second flush of roots. The first flush is in the pot. It's just been fabulous. So some good rain for her. You see, most of them not wanting to get colder than what I'm going to give them. The rain, when it pours that heavily, tends to stay rather warm-ish, so not concerned. If at any point in time I'm going to feel a little bit antsy and during the intervals of rain and then periods of wind and dryness, I may bring some candidates in just, you know, for peace of mind. I'm not here to push my orchids through a video and then explain the consequences of why I've lost them. We have gotten them to this point. We don't want to ruin it. We just want to give them a little bit more of a boost so that January, February, they'll somewhat appreciate maybe a little bit of a rest while they bloom. And then March, April is not that far away. I can't believe it. I'm going to tell you one more time, cartwheels around the patio. We're almost at the date as well, where the days are getting longer. Excite. <laughs> you can tell what a little bit of sunshine and warmth does to me and my soul and of course to the orchids to see them outside not cooped up in perpetual darkness <sighs> breathe in breathe out lovely so Schilleriana might be the candidate that may come in uh, depending but as the nights are staying a little bit on the warmer side maybe on Thursday I will bring her indoors or at least put her under cover on Thursday so that she can dry out in the breeze and then bring her inside before the temperatures go a little bit too risque something like that there's a lot of variables a lot of things i can play around with with my reasoning i will keep you updated i will do a little diary depending on what happens forecast wise moving down the row excite excite phalaenopsis hot kiss in the back there didn't bloom for me last year bud blast oh well hakuna matata she's growing well but also has started to show signs that her roots are slowing down I don't like that. I would prefer roots as opposed to a spike. But anyway, for the time being, she can do it all. I can't cut this spike. It would be too soon. But this leaf is coming along 
beautifully, despite the fact it's been so dark. And then here is stonking, statement piece, harlequin. I know, my leaves don't look the part. They should look like this. But once again, a little bit of stunted growth helps me out with the real estate indoors. As long as the orchid is doing well and <clears throat> wants to bloom with a beautiful, already naturally arching spike, uh, bring it on. And what you can see down there on the root front, oh, a little bit more rain, and we will get those into the pot without any issues, that's for sure. Uh, felt a little bit sticky underneath? No, that's all safe. This also gave me a great opportunity to give them all at once over. And then somebody is really showing off in the background there. Check this out. This is lemon meringue. <laughs> Look at this. This orchid is just telling me <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm happy now. I'm going to give you two spikes, beautiful green chartreuse blooms, and a leaf is growing. Of course, a root has to go aerial, but the root that I cracked, getting it into the pot, that growing tip is still active. The velamen is starting to soak up the moisture. Even though there's a crack in the velamen, we did it. That root is not aerial. We have one. I'll take just one. But yeah, she is a happy, happy phalaenopsis, and that makes me subsequently so happy as well. And then here is Baba. Baba, Baba, Baba. Mm -mm -mm. Baba wants to bloom, which is fine. She likes to bloom. I just don't always like seeing her trying to bloom when she is one of the most reluctant root growers apart from some of my mini fowls, but for a big phalaenopsis, this orchid just doesn't want to grow roots abundantly. But this year we have achieved some gorgeous roots, some new roots, be it only three. Two of them are in the pot. One has as yet to make up its mind, and I hope because of the rain, it is going to make up its mind, and I can convince it that going down is its better option. <laughs> very, very small yet immature spike, Probably won't let this one bloom. Again, we'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself. But here we are with Phalaenopsis Alexandra. Alexandra has not been that happy in self-watering with Lekka. Astoundingly enough, surprised me a bit because she's a vigorous root grower, but she had a little bit of a sulk when I took her out of lava rock, where she was doing tremendously well. So yeah, but I don't want a heavy pot because once this orchid gets her mojo going, she is a big orchid. Doesn't look like it right now because of the sulking and she's been dropping leaves. Next year, we are going to have to reposition her. I am tempted to do it right now, not in this video, but you know, I've got beautiful roots coming out and they are not exactly, hmm. Maybe with some rain, we can tell them where we want them to go. That's part of the plan. But Alexandra didn't bloom for me in 2021, but we have a spike and we have a branch. so. We'll make our decision a little bit further down the line if we're going to let her bloom out on the branch because of the energy or we'll, we'll see. And then here to the right, and I already know I've been so excited. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. I missed one. We'll get back to that one. Super important little orchid. Such a happy little orchid. And you can hear my voice. She makes me happy too. But here we are with Ninja Yellow. This one came from the orchid room. She <clears throat> needs to be encouraged to grow more roots into the pot. She doesn't like to have her roots in the pot. Astoundingly, everything that grows comes back out of the pot. I've got one root down here, if you can see it, I hope so. Two, as a matter of fact, right in there. I'm hoping to get those in the pot with the rains that are coming. And I've got a spike. now. Ninja Yellow tried to bloom for us last season, but she blasted her buds, not surprising, when she is such a reluctant root grower like Bubba. And then, of course, bringing on buds and me opening the doors and a draft and this and that and the other. Anywho, the benefit and the health of the majority of the collection takes precedent above one orchid wanting to bloom. She is alive, and that is the most important thing. But let's go back. Let me take you back gently and slowly to the one that I forgot. How could I forget? Ah, Phalaenopsis mini mark over there in the corner right here. Look at this. Got the roots. Transitioned her this season. Doing fabulously. This new leaf was a little bit of the kink. 
During the transition phase, no problem. This little leaf is coming along nicely. We may get another kink because, you know, the adverse conditions will show in the foliage. It's like a time stamp. But look at what Madam is doing. Look at that. Extensions on the older spike. So <laughs> I thought maybe I'd get a new spike. And then the other day I had a look-see. I'm like, here we go. A second spike is growing right here. But this one also may have some bud blast because of what's about to come, having been moved from her location indoors. I think though that all of them are gonna just do brilliantly. I will keep an eye on them and then we shall see how they respond. This is my furry pup down there that is king. And we're also getting photobombed by Oncidesa Sweet Sugar. And another pup over there. That, my friends, is a leaf. I wouldn't do that to you, but that is Baloo having a sniff over there. So, in our next clip, I hope to be showing you these beautiful orchids getting rained on. That is the plan. Fingers crossed, and I'll see you in a little bit. Ah, oh, look at this. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening in December. It is absolutely chucking it down. And I am absolutely loving it. And I think they are too. I've been outside to have a look. I'm totally wet, <laughs> but I couldn't help myself. I was going to stand outside with the equipment under an umbrella and talk to you, but yeah, it's a little bit too heavy. I think that would have been too ambitious a thought. Anywho, rain on my Phalaenopsis in December. Incredible. I'm enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and uh, maybe cross your fingers that I'm not risking everything and that we will be rewarded. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.